information contained in this podcast is an expression of opinion and does not constitute investment advice. This is the Gold Money Podcast with Andy Duncan, keeping you up to date with expert opinion on precious metals and the markets. Hello, good morning and welcome to this Gold Money Podcast with me, your host, Andy Duncan. Today I'm speaking to Thomas Jacob, the president of a campaign team in Switzerland who are trying to use the Swiss democratic process to introduce a Swiss gold franc into that landlocked European country. You may have heard this being discussed recently by Egon von Greyerts and Eric King on King World News. Good morning, Thomas. Well, good morning, Andy. Can you tell us about your organisation and its structure? Uh, gladly. I am the initiator of the idea. Uh, it's uh, been two years since it got introduced in Parliament. That's when it really got started. I'm the president of the association that we founded after the parliamentary process uh, took hold. It's a year and a half ago. My vice presidents are Dr. Luchsinger. He is a mathematician in the Zurich University. Then Dr. Karl Zweifel. He is a, a medical doctor. Then we have Mark von Rohr, financial specialists, Dr. Pamini, an economist, and Dr. Ludwa, also an economist, and then Maritza Gali for IT and uh, my wife for the, uh, for the money as for the moment. These are the, the board members. These are the main key players now. Do you have any political representatives at all? Yes, we have the Monsieur Luchsinger and Paolo Pamini and Mark von Rohr. They are from the FDP, that's a center party. And then we have a Zweifel, he is from the Swiss uh, Popular Party, the main opposition party. So we're well, well established. What actually is the Swiss Gold Franc? Can you tell me what it would look like if you got this through the Swiss democratic process? The coins themselves, we envision that they are standardized by the government. So the government establishes what form and what the gold content they shall have. But private producers shall then produce them as they see fit. And the special thing about it is they should be in gram. They should be easily recognizable and easily understandable, starting from 0.1 gram of gold in the center of normal coins, which will make them available from like $5 on, onward up to whatever. So they're not going to be in ounces or half ounces or anything? It could be ounces also. The smallest one needs to be really, really small and inexpensive and easily understandable. Since ounces are not familiar in Central Europe. Can you tell me why you started your campaign two years ago? I discussed the idea the year before the, it got introduced in Parliament. And then the member from, a member of Parliament approached me and said, I'd like to introduce the idea in a politically concrete form as a parliamentary initiative. And that's when it got started. So what drove you to initiate this campaign in the first place? Uh, I've always been interested in in economics and in fundamental ideas in the, of economics. And of course, gold money, of course, is a topic that's very prominent nowadays. And gold is a very interesting part of this uh, discussion that of the monetary system today. And I just had this idea of, you know, like a parallel currency introduction of the gold standard again. And that was so that was got the very good reception on the political level and on the intellectual level, and that's why I pursued it. Many people around the world might be unaware that Switzerland is like everywhere else in having a pure fiat money currency backed by nothing. The Central Bank of Switzerland, the Swiss National Bank, also has a policy of pegging the Swiss paper franc directly to the paper euro, supposedly to help the Swiss export and tourist industries. It also has a near zero interest rate policy like many other central banks. Why do you think the Swiss National Bank abandoned a centuries-long successful policy of a strong Swiss franc? And what effect is this monetary policy having on Switzerland? Well, you know, the Swiss National Bank is was caught between a rock and a hard place with the Swiss franc being in, involved in all the fiat currencies all around us and relatively stable, very small currency, very small amount of money floating. And, and of course, foreigners had a great effect on our exchange rate and they had to do something. And it's not the first time that they really intervened, like almost pegging the Swiss franc to a different currency. It's happened in the late 70s also with the German mark. It's, of course, much more difficult nowadays to get out of it. It is not really the issue for us, uh, for the gold coin currency, that we 
in vision. We don't, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of glad I don't have to solve the problem of the Swiss National Bank. There are only different, different uh, complicating options for them. But the gold coin currency is something completely different, independent from today's monetary system. And that's the attractive thing about it. So how's your plan going to create the Swiss gold franc? Are you winning? Yes, of course. <laughs> no, um, never optimistic, of course. No, one of the models is, uh, our models is um, there is nothing as powerful as an idea whose time has come. And the gold, gold and money is an issue that's here to stay. But I think we, with a parallel currency idea, have a politically feasible and also non-threatening uh, way of introducing gold into the monetary system again. The goal, the goal of our campaign is to amend the Swiss constitution with legalizing gold coins as we envision them. And there are two ways of getting this uh, constitutional amendment passed. One is the parliamentary process and the other one is a popular initiative via collecting signatures. Either way, the population will have to vote on it. And we are pursuing both ways. The parliamentary process, the first round, they just uh, closed, so to speak. We introduced it a year and a half ago. It got introduced by the Swiss Popular Party, which was the wrong party to carry it, politically the wrong party. Uh, so it got voted down along party lines. But we talked with many parliamentarians in parliament and uh, from all different parties, and they were all interested for different reasons. And so we are going to introduce that again, but with a, through a different party. That's one process. And the other one is that we are organizing now to collect the signatures to get it on the ballot. So you say it's going to be a parallel currency. So you're not going to try to replace the Swiss paper franc. It's going to be a separate thing like the kind of Ron Paul idea. That's the most important part about this idea. It's not establishing the gold standard in the established currencies, but it's something besides, I, I call it a complementary currency, a complement. And we are emphasizing not so much even the medium of exchange function of the currency, but rather the savings function of this gold coin currency. Because as a medium of exchange, the fiat paper currencies are still okay, and they will probably remain so for a long time, hope, hopefully for a while to come. The problem of, of the fiat currencies is, is that they are losing value as an, as, as an investment. And that's where the gold coin kicks in, so to speak, and it gives an additional alternative, a complement to the problems of, of the paper money. It's, it is a, if, it, if you're going to call, call it a currency, it's going to be a parallel currency. That's correct. There's, so there's going to be no capital gains taxes on it, no transaction taxes on it. It will be a money, but you envisage it being mostly a savings money. Exactly, exactly. Because the paper money is okay for daily transactions. It has the problems as a savings, as a means for savings. And of course, you know, if the paper money remains halfway decent for daily transactions, they will run in parallel. And it's easy to envision that they can run in parallel. If we can have a time frame for this, if you keep being successful as this democratic process rolls out, how long will it be before we see a Swiss gold franc? Well, it's going to depend on three factors. On the one hand, how the established paper money um, develops, you know, whether it gets worse or whether it gets better. If it gets worse, obviously, the interest will be more intense. Then it depends on publicity that we get. That also depends on the first factor. And then, of course, it's always a matter of money. If we have enough money, we can collect the signatures rather quickly. If we have to do a grassroots, it takes longer. Now, as time frame, the most optimistic, if somebody came today and said, you know, what, how much money do you need to collect the signatures within two months? Then, of course, you can, we can envision this being realized within a year. That's theoretically possible. Now, realistic, these things take two or three years, yes, to, to, to get realized, including the voting process. I should imagine the Swiss federal government is opposed to your ideas. What do you think your educated chances of success are? We have talked with exponents of the Swiss National Bank, and the interesting thing is if we had to introduce it the way we introduce it now, much refined from two years ago, I may say, it's not threatening. It's, it's a complement to today's monetary system, and it can even help today's our national bank in their main problem. Their main problem is that people buy Swiss paper francs as a liquid means of invest, as a liquid form of investment. 
And that's what causes the problems for the Swiss franc. That's why it got pegged. Now, and of course, a very liquid form of gold coins like we envision could help the Swiss franc in its safe haven function. It can alleviate the, these, these problems. And we have talked also with established economists, with all the, the most important established economists, and we've been able to, if not get th their support, but at least avoid opposition from them. They think it's an interesting experiment. If you do succeed, I actually envision that a lot of people around the world will start using this as a currency rather than as a savings vehicle. And if that happens, do you think the Keynesians around the world and all the other central banks might fight back? Could they perhaps ban the international use of this Swiss gold franc? Well, I suppose any country can do, can ban the use of, of foreign currencies within their territory. It's just going to be politically hard. If the Swiss people have the freedom to do this, it'll be hard to argue why others shouldn't have that freedom. I mean, looking at it more from, more from a distance, all we're talking about is making gold more easily, more practically and legally safely accessible to the small time saver. And there is no, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to argue against uh, this proposal. I mean, what do you want to tell your, what do you want to tell your population? Uh, you know, we want to treat you worse than the Swiss government treats their population. It's hard to argue against it. If this comes off in a couple of years or two or three years, you might have been responsible for reintroducing a government backed gold currency. How does this make you feel? <laughs> I don't know yet. I mean, <laughs> I'm uh, very enthusiastic about the process and I'm not worried about uh, how, how it's going to develop or what I'm going to, going to feel like um, uh, then. And of course, there are many other, like my board members who are all, all pulling up the, the, the same cart and uh, uh, many other people responsible along with us and the web designer and so on. So it's not only my baby. I'm very excited about the whole thing. But before we go, do you have any website links our listeners can go to if they want to help you out or find out more about your campaign? Absolutely. Uh, incidentally, you were an important part about it as well. When you did the first interview two years ago. <laughs> the website is www.goldfrank.org or goldfrank.ch, either one. We will, we've will. we worked uh, hard on a much extended and much more uh, um, attractive website. It's going to go online uh, beginning of November. So you might want to wait for that or look into it again beginning November 2012. Excellent. Herzlichen Dank, Herr Thomas Jakob, for your uh, time today on Gold Money Podcasts. And I hope that we'll be hearing more about your project as time rolls on. Thank you very much for the opportunity and uh, spread the word. That's one of the key factors. Subscribe to the Gold Money newsletter at www.goldmoney.com to receive email updates on new articles, videos and iTunes podcasts from our Gold Research section.